And um, Dimitri, if you want to go ahead and uh, and do your presentation, that's great. Oh, okay, thank you. Uh, just uh, sharing the screen. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this this message about. Uh, uh, do, do you see the screen? Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, this is uh, a short message about uh, 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 mother uh, observations line seven six point seven gigahertz uh, methanol measures. Uh, this work. Uh, uh, last uh, two three months and uh, just a short talk uh, about uh, uh, my setup and uh, and re end results uh, uh, this is a photo of my dish uh, with receiver uh, 6.7 uh, gigahertz uh, um, loc located near Moscow uh, size dish size uh, 1.8 meters uh, uh, sensitivity uh, was calculated uh, 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 was calculated no, not measured just calculated uh, from uh, uh, fit uh, fit uh, radiation pattern and uh, <clears throat> and and uh, how how the uh, how 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 the feet uh, look uh, see the dish size. Uh, system temperature was measured uh, one uh, one hundred fifty kelvin. Uh, in receiver, uh, uh, the new down converter from uh, ter by Terrasat uh, was used uh, was used to more than one one month uh, about one month uh, with uh, uh, with a low frequency uh, lower than receiving frequency about one gigahertz mm -hmm. uh, uh, <laughs> Intermediate frequency receiver uh, from Etus B two hundred mini uh, receiver is tuned for five kilohertz uh, resolutions. It corresponds about uh, zero point two kilometer per second in velocity. This is more more detailed detailed uh, of, uh, picture of of the setup. Uh, here is uh, uh, receiver receiver. Uh, this is uh, the that uh, down converter from Terrasat. Uh, you may see uh, here is this uh, local oscillator. Uh, 5.7 gigahertz. Uh, uh, and you can see uh, the feed with LNA uh, very uh, immediately closer to uh, to, to to the feed to uh, <laughs> to to uh, to reduce any uh, uh, any additions to. Uh, receiver noise uh, uh, and to get min minimal noisy figure of receiver. Uh, here are two words about uh, LNA. Uh, this is ho ho home brew, home made LNA. I it used uh, uh, Corva chips. Uh, uh, 
uh, and uh, uh, use cover chips and uh, uh, enclosure from uh, from uh, some uh, so, so, some uh, uh, some things uh, ordered from AliExpress. Uh, Chinese Chinese uh, Chinese made in, in China. Uh, I have ordered uh, uh, some beer by Steve uh, in enclosures and uh, uh, placed my in, in into this enclosure. Uh, 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 work the Lene works. Uh, 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 with uh, TerraSat model, model uh, well, no st stable, but uh, it can can be uh, can isolate uh, self uh, can self isolate if uh, load that uh, if if output load is reflected. Uh, okay. Uh, measurements, uh, system temperature measurements uh, uh, was was uh, done uh, using uh, uh, Y factor method. Uh, um, I didn't have uh, <laughs> some trees around my place uh, and the uses as as uh, hot uh, as hot place hot source. It's just a brick wall of, of my own, my own house, uh, and uh, its temperature I think uh, uh, a bit lower than amb ambient temperature, and uh, 280 kelvins, and uh, cold temperature about 10 kelvins. Uh, this is just approximate uh, estimations. Uh, and measure it uh, Y factor is about 5.3 decibels uh, and uh, resulting temperature and the resulting system temperature, temperature about 150 kilns for uh, for a sailor at all uh, uh, from uh, from known uh, lna uh, noise uh, uh, about uh, Uh, about 95 kelvin, I can uh, calculate the spillover, uh, ground noise and uh, surrounding noise of, of the antenna is about 55 kelvin. Uh, and uh, what results I, 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 go, I received uh, during uh, last month, Uh, this is uh, uh, W3 uh, measures, uh, methanol measures, uh, very strong and uh, stable measures. Uh, uh, expected uh, intensity, inspected flux about 3000 Yansky, but uh, I, I didn't receive 3000. All, all my, all my, um, all my, All my measurements uh, only less than 2,000 Yansky. I don't know why. Uh, maybe uh, I think the <clears throat> my parameters, uh, the system temperature, is uh, estimated uh, just approximately. But uh, I, I don't think the the uncertainty in the errors in, in these estimations is uh, too large. I see only 2,000 Yansky from this measure. Nevertheless, this uh, measure is very strong and can be used for as a beacon for antenna adjustments. Uh, I have uh, some problems with uh, after winter uh, with uh, disposition, dispositioning and uh, Uh, and uh, uh, thanks to uh, these measures, like, uh, uh, my position can be, I, I have adjusted using uh, this measure. Uh, next, uh, 
uh, measures from the object with uh, galactic coordinates uh, 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 also also rather stable stable and uh, strong about uh, 700 uh, Yansky in peak uh, uh, was observed several times uh, uh, last uh, just yesterday uh, and, and looks uh, and then looks well and stable uh, measure uh, next uh, uh, more 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 difficult uh, measurements uh, Cepheus a uh, object uh, uh, this is variable uh, or measure uh, first uh, first time I observe it I observe it uh, in in April uh, uh, just uh, oh, sorry just uh, two two peaks uh, two two lines in uh, spectrum uh, 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 two lines in spectrum and uh, and because of uh, these two lines uh, can be identified uh, and uh, low pi pictures in uh, left uh, low corner uh, from I Ibereki Ibereki database, uh, it uh, th this measure can uh, can have uh, such spectrum with two lines, and uh, as a, as example is the uh, Ibereki spectrum I I, <clears throat> I inserted in this uh, in this slide. Uh, this spectrum was received in April, and just today repeated their measurements of this measure. It also received two two lines in the spectrum. Uh, 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 sorry, and uh, both lines look. Also, I, I think also rather well, um, and levels levels of both lines also uh, was expected. Uh, if you can see, uh, this about uh, 300, 400, 400 Yansky, uh, and I received in the flux about 250 Yansky, I think this is uh, and this is uh, well matched to, to, to the uh, Iberaki observed uh, measures. Okay, I, I, that's, uh, that's all of my message. Thanks for, <laughs> thanks for attention. Okay. All right, anybody got any questions for Dimitri? Yes, Dimitri, you're taking a one hour average. Uh, are you tracking the telescope? Oh, okay, track, tra tracking one, uh, all observations uh, about one, uh, one hour of uh, integration time and all integration time, uh, the dish uh, uh, was tra tracking the source uh, in the sky. Thank you. What's the what's the software you're using to uh, accumulate the data and to process it? Uh, uh, the uh, um, uh, data uh, averaging uh, uh, integration and averaging. Uh, uh, is made uh, uh, on fly. I didn't save any uh, data on, uh, on, on, on PC. And uh, uh, 
the, the program of uh, receiver is uh, averaging immediately in, uh, in immediately du during tracking. Uh, uh, so the result of uh, uh, the, the result of uh, uh, receiver is uh, just to already average it uh, spectrum. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So, can you describe what you're using to do the tracking? What kind of a mechanism? Do you use it moves your antenna? Uh, well, this uh, 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 tracking gear is made uh, uh, by my order, special order uh, um, uh, from local lo local supply local uh, suppliers. Uh, 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 about uh, one zero point. Uh, Zero point zero five point uh, uh, one degrees uh, of accuracy in positioning and uh, in in in, in azimuth and uh, uh, activator uh, uh, activator uh, moving the elevations. Uh, uh, this is uh, from from United States uh, uh, ordered in the United States uh, and uh, initially uh, for uh, satellite uh, and I can see that uh, provide it uh, activator can, this activator can provide uh, the accuracy about. Uh, 0 0.1 degrees of accuracy I, 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 I see I see it you can provide that's okay okay good thank you and I wanted to make another comment that uh, it's interesting on your LNA that you put the absorbing material on the lid on the top cover to cut down that internal oscillation that's the type of material that has been discussed here a lot for making lot. Uh, measurements with with uh, with feed horns, and so uh, when you built your LNA, <clears throat> did you observe oscillation, and did that make you go back and add the material like that? No, uh, LNA is oscillating uh, when. Uh, when uh, loaded with uh, only when loaded with uh, uh, reflective lo load, and when in the input is uh, also reflective uh, load, like uh, um, like uh, uh, like, like feed horn, uh, this is stable when uh, when input is. Uh, 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 noise, uh, noise source, laboratory noise source. Uh, uh, and uh, with, uh, with uh, any output, uh, uh, the enclosure is resonating about uh, seven uh, gigahertz. Uh, it was uh, the, the resonance. The reso reso <clears throat> resonances was found using uh, VNA. Uh, the LNA was was tested uh, using uh, uh, VNA from Rode Schwartz, uh, uh, and uh, uh, the. Uh, <laughs> Uh, enclosure is a enclosure is a resonant uh, enclosure was suppressed using uh, absorber on the lead of uh, this uh, yeah. uh, this line PCB from uh, is made uh, from Rogers uh, AD 250 materials was ordered from uh, in local uh, local manufacturer, local manufacturer, uh, 
PCB was traced by me uh, uh, using just a program for, 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 for radio matters. Right. I see you have a long trace that goes from the output over to the connector to the oh, SMS yes. connector. Yes. That probably, yes. had, this is it. probably had a lot of capacitance with the lid when you put the lid on there. Maybe oh, okay, okay. Field. This is long, long, tra long trace. I mm -hmm. uh, this is the micro strip. Uh, it uh, I uh, just I recommend uh, some uh, when you uh, when you uh, when you if if you if if you want to build the some uh, uh, using Kaplan uh, Kaplan wave guides uh, in uh, 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 for uh, radio frequency uh, traces and uh, some attenuator about two three dB uh, at the output. Okay. Um, I've got a couple of questions. Uh, the uh, bandwidth, um, your 3000 Janskis or 2000 Jansky area, did you need a lot of bandwidth and uh, did you try, uh, you know, lowering your bandwidth or raising it? Did that help or hurt or what? Uh, bandwidth of uh, receiver uh, about uh, uh, 1.5 megahertz uh, and the resolution of uh, resolution of receivers only 5 uh, kilohertz uh, 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 if you uh, if you understand the questions uh, it's okay okay All right. Anybody else got any questions for Dimitri? All right. Excellent talk. It was really fun. Keep. keep oh, thank you. Uh -huh. All right. Uh, okay. Um, let's go around the room a little bit. I've got a little thing to show on Excel, but uh, Ted, you got any uh, uh, any updates on uh, your software or the uh, software? Uh, uh, you want to maybe take a few minutes to go over what we're trying to do with the uh, hydrogen collection uh, uh, shoes? Oh, shoes. Yeah, okay. I suppose we could talk about that. Um, the idea was, that, uh, can we get this organization to be organized and collect a bunch of information? Um, I suppose there's a recording about this already, so I'm not sure I want to repeat all that part. Uh, but if folks are collecting data of the galactic sky, then as uh, as a large area as opposed to little points, uh, then let's uh, share that information, particularly above and below uh, the horizon uh, or the equator, so that we can see things we normally can't see. That was the idea. Uh, it hasn't gotten terribly organized, but I'm poking it to try to make it go. Uh, let's collect the data and then figure out how to share it. Otherwise, I've been uh, playing with galactic arms and trying to figure out how thick they are. Uh, that's a whole bunch of new software I have to do. So I'm working on that as well as uh, coming up with a video to try to give an overall view of what Ezra does. I think that might be helpful. All right. That's what I have from here. Okay. Uh, there's a whole video that Ted did on shoes. Um, and uh, as soon as we, uh, if you guys have any data, um, we'll uh, establish a Dropbox. Uh, we, we can drop it in. Uh, then we'll figure out how to process it and add it to the current hydrogen collection that, that if you look at the shoes video, you'll see uh, that Ted's got a lot of uh, data already. I think plus or minus 45 degrees uh, galactic uh in latitude uh, but we're missing a lot uh in the northern and the southern hemispheres on the top ends so uh uh think about providing some and uh actually adding to the uh, current stuff 
and uh, then we can actually share that later. Go ahead, Ted. I'm thinking it's it's more like sharing the data so that we can add it to our own and things like that, uh, as opposed to having a central place that decides that this is the official answer. Uh, so I, I don't, as a, as a group project, uh, I see it just as sharing as opposed to emitting some big result of uh, calculation, because I think it can be uh, the math can be done differently. Let's explore all these ideas. Oh, that's great. Yeah, then we can, uh, everybody uh, not relying on the uh, Ezra software necessarily, but make your own and uh, using the, the raw data we got, and uh, that'd be great. Okay. Um, Alex, anything uh, new with you up in your front? Uh, just a few slides. Probably the, the concluding slides on this uh, T sys or the uh, T hot simulator. Okay. Uh, let's see something here. Can you see the the uh, telescope in the back in the amongst all the vegetation? Yes. Okay. All right. So this was the idea: is to uh, in order to try to do the the TSIS calculations, what is a, a way to synthesize this T hot measurement? And I have a pretty good area back here that's covered with azaleas and trees, so I have a pretty good representation of what hot would be. And the idea was to try to find a uh, some type of material that simulates that. Uh, this was the final configuration. I did this four times, and this is the result of of refining the process of being able to add uh, absorber sam samples, sandwiching them in directly under the feed. And so this one has a, a polyethylene lid uh, between the, the loop feed and the absorbers. Wasn't there before, there was always the possibility that the absorber may have actually been touching the, the loop feed. These final answers are off, differ a few fractions of a dB, and so that may have been the issue. The other thing is I came up with this clampable sleeve that I could actually squeeze the, the layers together. And uh, I went from basically six millimeters to uh, 25, a quarter inch to one inch. And so there were three or four layers in here, depending on the material. And so this, the, the data looks consistent. And so I'd say this is the final data set. Um, originally, I was working with these two uh, density levels from, of multi-comp that Newark sells. And uh, Charles Osborne sent me some of this um, characterized uh, attenuation foam that's designed for EMI absorbing. If you notice here, all this is like square foot, quarter inch thick square foot stuff. The low is $2 a sheet, $3 a sheet, and 45. And I guess that's paying the price of having a, a characterized material. The results are kind of surprising. Whoops, they go like this. This is the $2 a sheet and $40, $45 a sheet are very similar in their um, ability to simulate, to create a, uh, a background environment that simulates the T-hot, which in my system was running about minus 52.4 dB. Uh, the last time I ran this, the high density was a little bit higher. I attributed that potentially from because it was in contact with the, uh, the feed. So it looks like maybe five, five quarter inch layers five, six mil thick layers might get you right up, millimeter layers might get you up pretty close to the simulated potential, but this has to be highly dependent on the, on the type of feed. And so um, this, this is defined for a, a full wave loop, how it works with a, like a Cantana or other type of feeds, I, I'd have no idea, but this looks pretty good. And the, extremely good consistency between these two, and they feel the same. This stuff is like, feels like black foam rubber. This is a typical of what you'd find uh, holding CMOS components, and it feels like stale bread. There is, there is that much difference between the two. So I'd say this was a, a valid evaluation. End of story. 
All right. Was your uh, final uh, evaluation that the $2 stuff is just as good as the $45 for us? No, 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 no. no. You got to look at this. <laughs> no, this is the $3. Oh, well, yes, yes, right. The $2 and the $45 uh, had similar performance. I don't see, I never measured their transparency. I never actually measured the absorbing effect. I might do that sometime. This is just more of how it simulates uh, a T-hot, and I don't know that they that correlates with the absorber. Okay, questions for Alex? All right, thanks. Preston, uh, since you are a T-sys uh, experimenter here, I, you've been able to do a T-sys measurement yet. Nope, I think we just lost Preston. Okay. Wait, wait oh, a minute. Yeah. Here I am. <laughs> I, I clicked the wrong thing, and so I turned off my video instead of turning on my audio. Had a 69.2 uh, Kelvin sound. Sounds good. Um, Outstanding. Both uh, Alex and Charles sent me some material, and uh, I used uh, the stuff that Alex sent me first because it was easier to cut. So uh, so that's what I used to get the 69.2. Um, I found out some things about my uh, receiver in that uh, if I change the IF gain by 3 dB, it changes uh, it multiplies what I see on the display by a factor of 10. So I couldn't use that. And if I change the offset voltage by one volt, it changes wh what's on the display by four volts. So uh, I, the way I, I got around this is that I had to assume that the, um, that the IF gain uh, which was given in DB was really accurate. I had to assume that was accurate. And then um, for my uh, for my hot measurement with the um, with the absorber that Alex sent me, uh, with 10 dB IF gain, I had uh, one volt indicated. So then I went to a spot in the sky, uh, a, a dark spot, uh, according to radio eyes. And uh, it was at right ascension 9.5 and declination 34.90, right in that area. And according to radio eyes, there wasn't much radiation there. In fact, uh, but radio eyes was uh, the background map was at 408 megahertz, but I just took that anyway. And radio eyes said that that cold temperature was 13.4 uh, Kelvin. So I used the 13.4 as the cold. Anyway, when I had it on cold, I increased the IF gain. Uh, to until I got one volt on the display. So I figured as long as I uh, got exactly the same voltage, it wouldn't matter what the actual gain was. But then the, hopefully I'm making sense. So then the difference in the setting of the IF gain was, it was, uh, 16.4 dB minus 10 dB, which gave me 6.4 dB, which is the same that Alex had. But my temperatures uh, were slightly different because I used 13.4 K instead of 10 for the cold. And for the hot, it was 70 degrees Fahrenheit. So I converted that over and used that because it was actually 70 here. Um, uh, 
So that's what I did. But I I know now that to not to not mess with the offset, the offset has to stay constant when I'm doing this measurement because it really doesn't mean a whole lot except you keep the trace on the screen. That's all. Um, okay. Any questions about that part? And then I have one other quick thing. Okay. 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 okay go ahead. Yeah. The other, the other thing is I noticed that I had a, a spike, a tall spike at uh, minus 500 kilohertz. And uh, I traced that spike to my TV set, but the spike only occurs when the TV set is powered off, <laughs> not when it's on. Now, it's really in standby when you turn it off. I turn it off with a remote so it's on standby. So uh, if I power it completely down, it goes away. But with my TV set on off, and I was trying to think about what that might be. And I'm thinking that uh, I don't know, maybe it's an RF remote and not an IR remote. And when the TV is hunting for a remote, maybe it puts out more signal. I don't know. I can't figure out why when it's basically in standby, it generates a signal, but not an interfering signal, but not generated when it's turned on. Any ideas? Maybe it just kicks in a secondary switching supply just to maintain a few of the, uh, like the IR sensor uh, receiver. And, and so maybe it's just a, a low power switching power supply that kicks in. That's okay. Easy. I would That's, say that it's a switching power supply that in idle, it oscillates more and causes that interference. But after you load it, it uh, goes into a different mode and moves off frequency and doesn't cause a problem. That okay. That sounds good. As to what to do about it, I guess I just ignore the spike. Not, I don't know. Not a new TV. Get a new one. You need a bigger one anyway. A bigger TV. <laughs> Uh, I don't think it'll fit in my room. <laughs> uh, a little story when I had a, uh, I was doing this remote. I had the, uh, um, uh, the hydrogen receiver at somebody else's house. And uh, they, uh, uh, I can tell that they'd give a spike whenever their big screen was on. Oh. And uh, so uh, I was almost, you know, I could tell when they were watching TV, which sounded is, is pretty creep was pretty creepy at the time. That uh, because I was you know looking at their computer remotely, but I can tell their TV was on or off. So uh, yeah, the, those TVs are uh, uh, noise sources. I, um, I, I did find out one other thing that the um, when I was doing the hot measurement, I mean the cold measurement, the elevation of my dish was about eighty eight degrees. So. Uh, that meant that that my feed horn has a lot of spillover because the spike was a lot stronger than if the elevation was 25 degrees. So at 88 degrees, uh, the pattern of the uh, feed is pointed more at my house. So... Hmm. For cold sky, honestly, I would just point directly overhead, wherever you are at the time, and just pick pick a frequency. Oh, wait a minute, you have the Spectra Cyber. Yeah, uh, yeah. Can you can you still specify a frequency that's off the the fourteen two? I mean, no. can you? Uh, okay. No. Well, they go to go to overhead, and it's like about. Is it eight or nine o'clock in the morning? Right ascension is is twelve hours, and that's a dead zone. So I just just bring up Stellarium something and see when you're in the 
the void between the, the two pieces of, of the, the Milky Way at 12 yeah. hours and points directly overhead and see what you get. That's basically what I did, but I used uh, radio eyes to find the dark spot. And uh, here it was occurring about 6 p.m. Eastern time right now. Of course, it changes, but that's what it was a few days ago when I made the measurement. So, um, and, and I have a question on uh, the radio eyes. Uh, you're at four, the radio eyes is at 408 megahertz mm -hmm. and the, uh, and you use the, the data point, uh, the 13, uh, Kelvin or something like that, 13.4, whatever, mm -hmm. uh, for the, uh, for the temperature, but at 408 megahertz. Right. Is that, and, and so the real question is, is that comparable to 1420 megahertz temperature, uh, I just don't know if, if that's directly relatable or uh, it's a different temperature uh, at that. Because if you actually had hydrogen above you, the 408 wouldn't have picked it up. Um, right. Even though you'd have been looking right at the Milky Way. And so I wasn't sure if that, uh, if you can count that, you know, if you really have to go maybe look at Polaris or something like that for the, the it, hydrogen like uh, Wolfgang was using. It was the only number I had. So I didn't, I, it, it yeah. probably does not correlate. I agree with you. So, but um uh, at 408 it's like a call it a hole in space if you will it's it's just dark there at 408 and it is in between the the two the milky way so the milky right. way was right and left and it was in between right. so so uh it's an approximation i mean yeah. it's probably no more accurate than picking 10 out of the air <laughs> Yeah, I'm not sure we got that either, but uh, <laughs> all right. Well, excellent. That's really f all right. Anybody else have any TSIS measurements? Uh, can't leave Thank it all you. up to Preston here for his brand new TSIS. All right. Um, by the way, I, I did find I did find my absorber material uh, that I got from uh, Charles for 1420. That's what it looks like. Give a piece to Ted and a piece to the DSAS guys, which I don't think I've used it yet, but uh, I'm going to try that on my th uh, three meter dish. Okay. Uh, all right. What do we got there? Bob, you got anything going on? Oh, I have a lot going on and just don't have enough to report that would be exciting right now. I did enjoy your talk there, Dimitri, and I've got, uh, I did purchase the, uh, transferters that were sold by the Israelis that I think Wolfgang mentioned the part number sometime earlier. So I've got those available to me now. And I have a dish to use to try to set up a system to, uh, to duplicate your efforts there myself here and hope to do that one day. But uh, just still have, that's just another project in the list right now at this point. But that's all I have right now. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, I got uh, two Toms, uh, KD4BFQ. Yeah. Uh, hello, Rich. This is Tom. And oh, yeah. uh, I, I really have nothing to report, but I'll just uh, say hello to everybody and, and enjoy the, the presentations. Great, and nice to have you back. Uh, yeah. And I guess the other Tom is Tom Crowley. Is that potentially? No. No. The other Tom, Tom is Tom Crowley. Crowley. That's what I thought. Uh, KT4XN, Tom. That would be me. Yeah. Uh, gosh, I haven't done anything uh, recently. Um, uh, working on Radio Joe's antennas, trying to come up with a better solution in a small yard. So far, my uh, success is marginal. Um, I'm using a dipole and using a received loop antenna. Uh, they're both equally poor. 
So uh, I'm thinking maybe putting up a moxin and see if I can get that put up and see if that'll improve it. That'll give me a, about 3 dB over a, uh, over a dipole. So that may be my next attempt. Okay. That's about all I've got. I can, am, you uh, see, can you see Jupiter with just a, di uh, a wire dipole or a loop? Uh, not that I have. It has been done. Uh, but you also have to be in a radio quiet area. Uh, although to my south and west, I don't have anything for several miles. Uh, I have houses to the north and uh, east. So that that doesn't help. And of course, with today's electronics, that doesn't help either. Well, uh I'm working on the I'm working on a model that uh, I've got two dipoles modeled, so you can aim them just like the standard Radio Jove. But um, it's potentially you can add more dipoles uh, and get more gain and more directionality precision uh, with, and and that might be the thing is you add three or four dipoles uh, and you phase them appropriately to to get, get that beam pointing at Jupiter. Uh, and I'll show you what I mean with the two dipole model, but I can add a third dipole and see what that looks like. And that might allow you to get enough gain and enough directionality with maybe three, three or four dipoles. Um, um, the issue is space. And if you don't have the space, you can't put up big antennas. Oh, you don't have the, you, you can't even get the, the dipole itself, one dipole. I mean, I've got a dipole up, uh, but that's about all that I can get up on the in the yard. Oh, you can't get like five or feet, five feet to the north or some, you know, uh, I'm trying to see if I can, how, how close we can get them together, the dipoles together and, uh, and get the phasing proper uh, for the baselines. Okay. Anyway, I'll, let me, well, let me I mean, experiment I, with more, more dipoles. Uh, looking looking at the, uh, the Radio Joe dual dipole, the, the Krauss design, uh, that's more than five foot apart. And oh, it's 15 meters. Yeah, it's 15 meters. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, but I, but I, but it, based on the phasing uh, formulas, it's potential that you can get more at least I'm, I'm thinking you can change, lower the baseline to a lot less than 15 meters and maybe even add a, th a third or a fourth dipole really close together. Uh, and if you phase them properly, you can get the, the net result with higher gain and everything com more compacted. So maybe you use, uh, you know, your, your backyard, you can have 10 feet and have three or four dipoles within 10 feet, as long as you phase them properly. Uh, That's that's a thought. I can take a look at that and try to model that and see how that comes out. Yeah. The, uh, the issue is yeah, the more yeah. elements that you add, the smaller the field. Oh, no, absolutely. Absolutely. So, It'll be a, a tighter beam. Then you're, you're gaining uh, gain, but your your field of view is becomes very small. And I'm not sure if that's a good solution for me. I yeah. think the Moxon, which gives you 3 dB over a dipole, uh, gets close to what uh, what the Radio Joe dual dipole will give you. It may be a better solution. And I've also seen people with a two-beam uh, uh, Yagi uh, for 20 meters or 20 megahertz. So uh, I've seen a couple of those. Yeah. The, the other yeah. thing is, is that when you look at the dipole and you're trying to pick up eight mega, uh, megahertz of, of data, that uh, the SWR just goes wild. And you can actually see that when you, when you look at, uh, if, you, if you get a solar flare, you can see the effect where the gain is way down in some areas 
because of a dipole. So the moxins tend to be a little bit wider, a little bit more gain. So that's that's probably going to be the direction. And as I said, I've got limited space in the backyard. If you have a two beam um, Yagi, Rich, how big is it physically? It's huge. <laughs> it's, it's a big. Yeah, I was I was looking around on um, at different antennas, and most of them are sort of when it when you look at the diagrams, and then when you get to how actually how big these antenna are, they're sort of coyly evasive. They don't really tell you that it's forty feet on a side. Right. No, that, that, these would be. These would be big. The ones I saw were on towers, and they were uh, huge. Uh, so, uh, yeah, you, that's probably not a backyard option either. But No, I, I did see this. Um, I was looking in the Q&A under Radio Jove, and they said that you could put one of these antenna on the inside of a window, which sort of directly contradicts. The, there is a woman here, a... a um, I forget her name, and she she sort of said blankly that no, you can't put one of these antenna inside of a of a building. You have to put them outside. So I thought it was odd that that I would find something that said that. Anyway, anyway, onward we go. Yeah, I, I don't I don't think you, you can, can. You can use a, a loop antenna inside uh, a building you're going to lose a couple of dB going through the wall, going through the window. But uh, it's it's not a not a good solution. The, I, I was thinking if if we could launch like a, a weather balloon with a kite and attach a, an umbrella-like antenna to that, we might be able to get some decent readings before we got shot down. <laughs> Well, you want to yeah, tell watch out for Maverick and uh, and Goose. They tend to shoot down balloons. Wow. Uh, the the other issue I I had a you know when I had ten acres, I had a fairly large antenna field, um, hundred hundred sixty degree dipole uh, plus a three element beam up at uh, forty seven feet, and that worked well, but again. I don't have that space anymore. Well, um, I've thought of that uh, using a balloon to raise the, uh, the a wire uh, when I was doing the uh, uh, Aries stuff and we were uh, in a valley and we were trying to get above the, uh, you know, get the uh, antenna above. Um, and I'm not sure that you know, that would make it a vertical as opposed to a horizontal, uh, you know, beam. But uh, I'm not. I, I don't know if that would work or not. And uh, vertical get... verticals need a tremendous ground plane to work well. Uh, so verticals, you're lucky if you can get unity gain out of them. But if if I took if I took your standard horizontal, uh, uh, you know, wire, which had you know with the center the center tap and stuff. And I just took a balloon on one end and just took it up. Uh, obviously, you'd have the, the the other wire coming down from the center of that. You know, assuming the balloon's big enough to do that, would that work? The uh, way you do that, be, the feed line should be off at ninety degrees from the, the way. To, the way you could do that, and I've done that, is you run the coax. You have one element of the lower element of the beam is is a is your coaxial cable. Halfway up, you split out the center conductor for the other half, and you bottom, you end feed it in that the outside of the shield for the lower part is the radiating element. You could do it that way. Wow. Right, Tom? Yeah, I mean, that, that'll work, Alex. Uh, but the thing is, is, you know, with Radio Jove, you're trying to get... 180 degrees of visibility and you're trying to get gain. Uh, those two do not work well together. 
that's just fun. It's just a fun thing to, to think about as uh, uh, while we're doing this. Okay. Um, uh, Wendy, you got anything else? Uh, that's it. All right. Thanks, Tom. No, I'm not. Um, I'm trying to um, look into purchasing some equipment and so forth, but nothing really, nothing really clear unless someone knows where I can get a, a cheap PC and start fiddling around with Unix. I know that you can get them used off Amazon, but anyway, it's not important. That's that's what I'm doing right now. Okay. I can, I can post, uh, I'll post the name of a place in the Dallas Fort Worth area that sells uh, refurbished Dells. And uh, I purchased a, uh, Oh, it's one of these smaller footprint computers from him. It's about probably eight inches square and two inches thick for $200. And they have Unix uh, Ubuntu on that or Linux Ubuntu. And, that sounds uh, great, Bob. It, that's it just what out. I'm looking for. Yeah, I'll, I'll post a note in the chat in just a second for this place. Thank you. Great. Uh, Helen, you got anything? Um, no, I have nothing at this point. We've been dealing with some health issues here, oh. but we're moving oh. along and we'll um, we'll get there. We definitely will. Okay. All Thank right. you. Well, take care of yourself. Uh, let's see. Um, Kevin? Good afternoon. Uh, nice talk from Dimitri and nothing to add here at all. And no, this is not current snow. This is <laughs> this is just the only picture I seem to have of our dual dipole out back there. So I threw that in as a background. That's it. Everybody's quiet. Wait, I was trying to get off mute. Uh, <laughs> great. Um, let's see. Uh, um, my God. Yeah, I, I've been working on my dishes and uh, I focused the dishes. I moved the food feed horn actually in towards the dish another three quarters of an inch. So from the calculated focus to where it's at right now is about an inch and a half inside the feed horn, and I'm using circular feed horn, the traditional one with the uh, choke on the outside and stuff like that. So it's improved, but my T-sys is still very high. So something I'm doing with T-sys isn't working. So I'm receiving stuff, so I, I don't know what's going on. Uh, that's about it. Thank you. Okay. Anybody got any ideas? And uh, what it, what is your current T sys and uh, your T hot and T cold measurements? Or well, so it's okay. We won't tell anybody. We want the ratio, <laughs> not the T hot and the T cold. Yeah. And my T sys is our three hundred Kelvin area. Yeah. 330. Okay. Yep. All right. Okay. Uh, let's see. Did I miss anybody? I think we got everybody. Um, okay. I'm going to, I'm going to show you. I'm uh, so I'm currently working on my model for uh, uh, phasing and uh I just want to show that real quick because I got a Radio Jove model. If you guys can see this on the right, this is a 20 megahertz, uh, uh, which is actually 15 meter wavelength. And I've got it at the, with a baseline of 6.1 meters, which is what the uh, Radio Jove uh, wants. And you can see the peak here, which is gain, gain on the top elevation angles on the bottom okay 
And so you see the way Radio Jove would work with, this is a two beam that it actually phases so that at 90 degrees without a phasing cable, you're looking straight up, that it gives you the highest gain at straight up. And what a phasing cable will do is it'll actually move this peak to the left and they usually say between a 90 degree phasing cable and 135 degree phasing cable, you'll get somewhere in the 30 to 50 uh, elevation angle where that peak will be moved over. Okay. And that's a 20 megahertz. Now, I want the interesting thing is if I change the frequency, let's say I want to go to 400 megahertz, I'm going to show you a, a very interesting effect here is that you have a very good chance of messing up and, and you know, what it does is starts looking very much like uh, your, uh, your phased array uh, interferometer and that you'll get these peaks and uh, maxes and mins and you can very easily uh, drop into one of these here and lose all your gain on when you select that. So I was trying to determine if it's worth putting a third uh, for a standard uh, standard interferometer, putting a third antenna to the north of the two uh, two ones. And if I go to 1420 megahertz, that's what it looks like if I put a northern antenna up. Uh, and the chances are that if you're going to you know, you have to phase it exactly at a certain uh, elevation angle in order to not fall, lose all your gain in one of these troughs here. So it's very, uh, it's, it'd be very hard to put a northern antenna up unless you've got very precise measurements. Uh, and I just want to throw that out that that's sort of what I was looking at, uh, you know, for a, a northern uh, phased uh, northern uh, antenna for a phased array uh, interferometer. Um, anybody any questions? No? Okay. Well, I do. Okay. Uh, I think what Joe, now I haven't really kept up with Project Joe, but They've switched to uh, a, a different receiver now with Joe too, and uh, they're doing a, a waterfall display covering a large bandwidth. And um, one of the guys, and I don't remember his name or call, but he he's put together uh, an antenna that looks kind of like a folded dipole, but I think it's terminated on the back side in a resistance and it's supposed to cover that entire uh bandwidth uh are y'all familiar with that and i th i think it takes up a uh, a little bit less space uh in a way in that it might be a little bit shorter but you'd still need multiple multiple ones of those to get uh, an amount of gain, I assume. So um, does, is anybody looking at that approach that that he uses? I think he he sells them, I think. Is, is there, a, and I haven't looked yet, is there a new manual uh, out that uh, intended... Right now they got a Radio Jove antenna manual, but it has the old dipole uh, phased uh, dual dipole uh, in it. It doesn't have the new one like you're talking about. Is there a new manual that they produced? Uh, I, I don't know. Um, since I got uh, um, up over my head in 1420, I've kind of dropped Joe, but um, I did at one of the uh at one of the sarah conferences at at green bank uh he was developing that antenna and uh he had a 
some instruments with him and he was working with the length and and what resistance to terminate terminate the back side of it with and uh, things like that. So then he de he developed it and he sells it as a package, I think. So uh, if you buy it, he probably provides all the instructions you need. But okay, uh, is there a uh, anybody got the link to? Uh... What he's selling? Can you put that in the chat, maybe. Uh, okay. All right. Um, that's all we've got for today, I think. Anybody else have anything they want to present or uh, ask a question for? All right. Well, thank you very much. I'll go ahead and uh, I'll probably post this on uh, YouTube. And, and by the way. Um, just for our YouTubers, uh, we've got currently 697 subscribers. We've gone up about, we're going about one new subscriber per day. So uh, I think as soon as we hit a thousand subscribers, the YouTube algorithm uh, displays us more and we end up, you know, going up more exponentially. Uh, and we only have, we have 412 members in the society and that's gone up 20% since last year. Um, but since we have 697 subscribers, that's future uh, members. So I realize that, I, not that I'm trying to get a membership campaign going, but uh, yeah, I am. Uh, so uh, go ahead and advertise this a little bit. And uh, uh, if you use the chat uh, in the uh, YouTube, uh, you know, go ahead and like and subscribe and, uh, and go ahead and use some of the comment sections that also causes the algorithm to, you know, assume that we are better and uh, they will display it to more people. Uh, you know, a, a viral video for us is a hundred, uh, hundred views, right. As opposed to millions like everybody else gets. So uh, I just throwing those out, those numbers out uh, and go ahead and uh, Eastern conference. If, uh, I know, if you can't make it physically uh, uh, sign up for the zoom link. Uh, and uh, so you can uh, listen in on the conference. All right. Uh, that's all I've got. And uh, thank you very much. And uh, talk to you guys. Uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the next thing is in two weeks, and then we'll have uh, 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 the Drake Lounge in two weeks, and then we'll have the, uh, uh, that, that same week, we'll have the uh, Drake Lounge Australia. Rich, before we go, I got a question for Alex. Alex, have you modified the scope in the box uh, antenna to work better at 420. Oh yeah. Of... Oh yeah. Dramatically. Um, well, yeah, let me just bring up, let me show you what, uh, let me see something here. Hold on. I've got, to see if I can find a picture of the antenna. Yeah, I have, uh, Oh, okay. Let's just bring this up. Yeah, I'm not talking about the dish. I'm talking about the 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 physical antenna piece itself. Well, let me just share this one screen. Okay. Uh, I I lined this is lined with a uh, aluminum um, window screen because I was getting some feed through th from these through these slots of ground noise. So that dropped the ground that that dropped the cold sky about one dB because I was getting 290 K through this this um, mesh these long slots. Okay, but you changed the actual feed. I'll go out to your yes. website and yes. take a look at what you did with your feed. Yeah, right. This is this is a loop feed. Uh, yeah. You can't see this now. This is like a little piece of a uh, plastic dew cover. But yeah, if you, yeah, I mean, you can even look at my QRZ page and see what see what it looks like. Yes. So this is a loop feed, and this is a uh, Tom Henderson Electronics on here. This has a noise figure about 0 0.25 to 0.27 or something like that. So I have I have the LNA here and down on the um, 
the mount, there's a, a cavity filter, and then a, a second wide, 13 dB wide band amp. Uh, yeah. Uh, I was wondering on the uh, 2.4 gigahertz speed, if anybody's taken that apart and extended that out to, uh, to 1420. I started doing that, but the problem is it is, it's so exposed. I mean, this has the little choke ring around here. The, the sides are so, op are so open to uh, the, the ground environment that you, I don't think you'd really get a good system temperature. I haven't tried it. Um, maybe that's something you could do. It'd be worth the effort. It's easy enough. It's easy enough to slot, take that, that um, envelope. Let, let me shut this down. The, uh, the, the little plastic package opens from the bottom. It's sealed together with like an RTV or something like that, but you can open up and take the two, the two T's of sides of the, uh, the dipole apart and you could extend it out. Yeah, I'll give yeah. that a shot and see what happens. The other thing I'm not sure that it's optimal is that it uses a, uh, a quarter wave stub on there. So that has to be really mistuned for, you know, 1.4 versus 2.4. Yeah. Thanks, Alex. Let me mention that uh, I think that, that what Preston was trying to remember earlier was the stuff that Dave Topinski did on the uh, radio mm -hmm. show. He's a guy that's done the folded dipole. And I think what he used on the backside was a 600, 600 ohm resistor. And he has a, he set up a quad dipole system. So he had uh, all four directions he was feeding into his receivers, I believe. So there are several videos in the YouTube section that Dave has done. I think he describes some of this in his Radio Joe stuff. So if you go to the YouTube videos and some of the older videos, you'll find that. Yeah, there's a, uh, uh, if you if you go to the, uh, I've got them separated out. There's a Radio Joe section. You can go right to the Radio Joe videos on there and uh, you can look at that. Uh, also, I think uh, um, Tom, uh, uh, Alex uh, describes his feed that he made uh, as his loop feed uh, uh, in one of his videos. So uh, you can probably see that too. All right. Thanks. Send me an email if you have any questions. Will do, Alex. All right. Okay. Hey, last, uh, anybody else? This is fun. And uh, thank you for our guest speaker, Dimitri, and uh, good job. And uh, 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 we'll go ahead and sign off. All right. See you next week Bye. or a couple of weeks. <laughs>